a manual? This actually looks pretty nice considering how cheap this thing is. Screws. What? How is... This is... This battery case is massive and I do not know why. Let me show you another 100 amp hour battery for a quick comparison. So something seems fishy. This has more capacity than this huge battery over here. So I'm wondering if maybe it has grade B cells or something. Um, I don't know of any 95 amp hour cells. Typically they're 100 amp hour and a Battleborn is large for a 12 volt 100 amp hour. So why is this case just so massive? But keep in mind, this battery is dirt cheap. It was $269. Okay, it has a 50 amp BMS and it says that it has 95 amp hours, but we'll see about that. <laughs> time to explore, time, USB, lithium iron phosphate, and then this little dude with an RV. It's just, what in the world is going on? Oh, it's the same label on the back. Nothing I can really tell by looking at it. That does not sound like there's anything inside. Feels like there's a lot of foam on the bottom but not much on the sides. Let's cut it open. Oh, see, there's nothing on the sides. There's insulation foam on the bottom. We've had spray foam in batteries, but nothing like that before. There is not a lot of stuff holding this thing. In here. It was just floating inside. Not as bad as I anticipated, actually. I thought they were gonna throw it together with like nothing, but for the price, this is pretty interesting. Barcode is intact, but there is writing on each cell. And these are 384 watt hours divided by 3.2 volts nominal. 120 amp hour cells, you guys. But the battery is rated for 95 amp hours. So yeah, there's something wrong with these cells. Either they're used or they're manufacturing rejects. We have no idea. This is straight from China. And the cells are mostly flat. There's a little bit of bulging, but it's very small. This is like a grade B Chins battery. Pretty much has the same quality BMS, the same build quality. I think they're using the same balance leads and the same bus bars, but I've never seen these cells ever used. 120 amp hour cells, but they rate them for 95. And oh, look at this. There's capacity figures on each one. Like this one states 98,243.3 milliamp hours. So this is 98 amp hours. And this sticker was torn off and it's over here. And this one's 98 amp hours. Here's another one, 98 amp hours and 98 amp hours. Interesting. I think they're actually matching these cells by capacity because they're so close together. And this is a high temperature switch on the cells. So it obviously does not have low temp charging protection. Also, this is a 50 amp BMS. So they're using very cheap cells, a very small and low current capability BMS. And this massive battery case, this thing is just nuts. But these are cattle cells those are high quality cells but you have no idea what these were used for let's calculate the degradation just for a rough idea 98 divided by 120 81 percent of their original capacity that's pretty bad that means these could be cycled 3,000 5,000 even 7,000 times and we have no idea these could have been used in a bus an EV um, for grid, who knows? And the problem with that is you don't know what the cycle life degradation will be like in the future. Usually for the first 3,000 to 5,000 cycles of most cells available in the market today, we have lots of test data. But after that point, and they hit 80% degradation, who knows how long these will last for? Let's see if there's a warranty on the product listing. They're getting better and better at their marketing material. I'm not seeing many spelling errors, which is pretty crazy. Nowhere on this listing do I see a cycle life estimate, nothing. Uh-oh, here we go. 2,000 cycles, they state 2,000 cycles, really? To what capacity? These are at 81%. In my opinion, it's impossible to have a cycle life estimate without a rate of degradation or what capacity it's gonna be after that many cycles. And look at these graphics, non-toxic, explode with a capital E, and then lowercase p for polluting. These are just silly, man. With everything said, I still think these will outlast a lead acid battery, but I would not trust the marketing material. And for these to be at 81% capacity means these were cycled very 
hard. Probably at higher C rates than you could ever imagine. Maybe three or five C or something. You really have no idea. I just, there's no way to tell. The crimps and the connections and the balance lead, all of this is actually pretty nice. Now, would I personally buy this? I actually cycle grade B cells every day. Behind this camera, there's a 30 kilowatt hour bank and I use it to charge my car. I do not recommend my viewers do that, especially if you don't know what you're doing, but these might actually last longer than a lead acid battery. But you get double or triple the cycles with a new battery for a little bit more money. And personally, for the price of a Chins battery, which is only like, what, 50 or or $100 more than this, you're gonna get brand new cells. They are the cheapest quality cells but they are brand new and they should easily last 5,000 cycles and you'll have 100% capacity or more on the first cycle. I would avoid this. Even though I like grade B cells, if you think about it in the price and the market right now, I would not buy this and I don't recommend anybody else to do so either. But they did a good job and I'm sure some people will still buy it, especially if you're on an extreme budget. Um, it's really tough though because the Chins has a 100 amp BMS. This is only 50. So you're really cutting corners with this battery. You would have to buy two of these batteries to run a 100 amp load and at 12 volts, that's 1200 watts. So you'd probably have to buy like three of these. I would much rather buy a higher quality, higher output capability battery instead. But it sure is fun to see what they're doing because I guess they have a ton of these cells and they want to use them for something. And if someone will buy them, well, here you go. Oh man, and they are getting so cheap. Spray foam, two green plastic straps, a couple pieces of aluminum. Yeah, it's aluminum. Some fiberboard and the cheapest BMS around and bam, you have a battery. Something I don't like is how this battery is mounted in the case. If it's a high vibration environment with that spray foam, um, I just kind of wiggled it out. Even with other cheap batteries, it's harder to get out than this thing. This thing wasn't mounted that securely in my opinion. Now I would love to hear what you guys have to say because this is a peculiar battery. But please let me know in the comment section below. And yeah, I hope you like the quick teardown and I hope you have a good good night. Fight.